everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com, and welcome to the Daily Market Mindset, where we take a look at the psychology behind the moves today so we can better understand it tomorrow. And today we're taking a look at the FDAX on the Eurex Exchange. Now, we had a lot of news coming out today, non-farm payrolls, etc. So generally when we have that type of scenario, either you're early in, early out, you get the trades in and you're done for the day, or we get a lot of movement in the afternoon session, or a lot of traders will actually wake up early and trade the European session instead so they don't even have to deal with it. So looking at the FDAX in this case, it seems to be very much the scenario. We had some okay movement uh, yesterday with a nice grind higher, sort of pulled back towards the end of the day, and then we open up today with a gap down. Now that gap down really, in all things considered, if we zoom out, we can see where we are, right? We have a nice bearish trend working its way lower. Likely sellers are going to at least give it a shot if they're able to on the open. So we get a little bit of a turn down, it follows through, we find a little bit of a bottom, and then start seeing a little bit kind of, uh, the market just sort of pausing, right? We're, we're not getting the follow through that we were once seeing, we're not getting any of the good continuation, we have a big bull breakout, completely falls apart on itself, the bears try coming in, all they manage to do is hit the lows, turn back up again, we're transitioning into a range. Right, so whenever you have a transition into a range, you have to start shifting the way that you think. It's no longer going with a trend type trade like buying a pullback or or anything like that. Now you're looking to fade moves because chances are you're going from one end of the range to the other and then you're gonna come back to that other side of the range again. It just bounces back and forth. So when we start pushing back up in towards the highs of this range, we get a big old bear candle response, small little bear flag, and a nice breakout attempt back lower to get that move down to the lows of the range. Beautiful move to start off the morning there. And then when we get to the lows, we see the exact same thing, right? We hit the lows, huge breakout candle, one of the biggest bear candles that they've had all day, and in a range day, that's a bad thing for the sellers, right? The sellers don't want that. They want a small little candle so they can get in early ahead of this kind of move. They don't want to get in way down here because now they're selling at the bottom of a range on a range day, right? That's one of the worst places that you could get in. So we hit that low and that offers up the buyers a reason to buy into the close of that bear candle, assuming that that breakout is going to fail. And also the weakness of that candle helps a lot. And that bounce to move right back up towards the top of the range. Now, before that move up to the high of the range there, we broke above the moving average, big, strong bull bar, little one candle pullback. They trap the lows, right? Sellers may be looking for continuation. You have a breakdown of a range low and a bear trend, it pulls back, and then it turns down again. Sellers likely sold underneath that to try to get that move going down, and they were immediately disproven on the very next candle. And that is your reason to become a buyer to finish off the move to the top of the range from there. Now the exact same thing, copy paste down here, up here, right? We get to the high of the range, huge breakout attempt, which completely falls apart. Massive bull candle, likely, uh, if it isn't, uh, this would be a close contender, but the biggest candle of the day for the bulls now. Again, it's a bad thing. The, the buyers don't want that. They wanna try to get in down here so they can ride out that move. And that allows the sellers to jump on in, assuming that, you know what, they're probably not gonna be able to break that high again. And I'm looking for them to come back down to hit the lows and it worked out beautifully to the downside there as well. Now, this is where things shift a little bit because we go from a massive bull candle into a massive bear candle. And we've already said this several times, that is a bad thing for continuation sellers. Sellers don't wanna sell way down here unless they're new or maybe don't know the difference. And that's going to make them a little bit nervous. So knowing that sellers are nervous here, they're not gonna to wanna to sell below that low. And a lot of times, newer sellers, newer traders who maybe don't know better will. And that means that that is a trap, right? We have sellers that are trying to sell the highs after a big move down like this. It's very likely that instead of continuation, you get a pullback back into the move. From there, the sellers may choose to re-enter, but more likely you're going to get a retest of at least near the highs or maybe even a breakout through the highs before they come back down. And that's going to trap out a lot of the traders that tried to get in below that low their stops are going to be above the highs notice where we turned around yeah so when we have that kind of momentum in that big of a candle biggest bear candle of the day after just having the biggest bull candle of the day a lot of the experienced traders aren't going to believe that breakdown and they're going to buy into it assuming that it's a failure and not likely to work and it's going to reverse and stop out other traders who maybe did try to take it and that is exactly what happened a beautiful bull turn right back up and that allowed maybe some of the sellers who entered in down there to exit right there and a lot of buyers to buy above that, which means that everybody's doing the same thing in the same place, and that causes a pop back up to a new high again. So just a phenomenal day of price action overall, in, in you know, all things considered with the, inven uh, not the inventories, the uh, uh, 
the movement for non-farm payrolls and, and all of the news that we had with uh, with some shootings and stuff going on in Stockholm, it, it made the market a little bit of a choppy, volatile place. But it still followed through the technicals, and as long as you stuck to your plan, you did A-OK. -okay. So that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you found it useful, maybe a little entertaining, and we'll see you next time.